All the uh, border skiers are super happy today yes. because uh, we've had feet of snow up in the mountains. We had a little bit here and now it is clearing out. Temperatures will be in the 30s in through the rest of tonight. 31 degrees by 11 o'clock and then overnight lows dropping into the 20s. But right now it is gorgeous out there over Civic Center Park. We've also had some gusty winds up toward Loveland Ski Area. But boy, there were a lot of people up there today enjoying the fresh powder. They've had 14 inches of snow just in the last couple of days. About two feet reported up at Steamboat. 48 degrees for our high today here in Denver. 48 in Greeley. 20s and 30s for the higher elevations. And right around 40 out for the western slope. Sunday, though, another mild day on the way. It's going to be absolutely beautiful tomorrow, but we will have rain and then that rain changing to snow on Monday. This is where our big change is going to occur. It'll be chilly into next week, so keep that in mind, especially for outfits next week because you're going to need to bundle up. Our highs will mostly be in, in 30s for the afternoon. And right now, we're mostly in the 40s here for the Front Range. We have 43 downtown and 43 for Commerce City. Our satellite radar picture is very quiet now across the state, uh, off the East Coast. This is the storm that passed through here now is just blowing up across the eastern United States. We have watches and warnings for about 25 different states here as a huge storm continues to push on through. We're keeping an eye on a cold front coming in from the Pacific Northwest. It's headed this way. Lots of watches and warnings already out ahead of this storm, as you see into parts of Nevada and Utah and Idaho. But here we're going to have sunny skies as we wait for this storm to approach. So tomorrow, a really pretty day here for the Front Range and the Eastern Plains. We'll have increasing clouds as that storm gets closer into tomorrow night and then we'll see the change changes showing up into Monday. But for tomorrow, lots of sun temperatures into the low 50s by three o'clock. We'll have temperatures in the mid 50s for afternoon highs, 30s and 40s mostly for the higher elevations. Our forecast for Denver, sunny skies, nice and mild winds about 10 to 15 miles an hour. If you're going skiing at Keystone, looks like Sunday, sunny and breezy temperatures near 40. Then that snow on Monday, snow and breezy with temperatures in the 30s. So clouds increase on Sunday. Here comes the cold front. It's coming this way, and by Monday afternoon, we'll see heavy snow in the mountains once again, and then it starts to come across the Front Range and the Eastern Plains, and we'll have the colder air moving in. This is what it looks like 7.30 Monday night. We'll start to see some rain mixed with snow here for the area. It'll last all night. This will be by 10.30 Monday night, snow all across the area, and it lasts all the way through the commute on Tuesday morning. So we start to see a little clearing off to the north by 11 a.m. Tuesday, but look at we have snow all across the Front Range and the Plains. Some of the uh, models are putting more extensive coverage here for the front range, so we could see more snow than we've seen in a while here as that storm moves through. 5 to 10 inches as possible up in the high country. So temperatures stay in the 50s the next couple days. Here comes the cold front. Then we drop into the 30s. Another cold front for Thursday. Low 30s on Thursday afternoon and 40s into Friday and Saturday. Yes, and rains in Africa too. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. Up next, the insects that are killing our trees and putting our homes in danger. This is some of the worst outbreaks we've had in Colorado in, in memory. We're talking about the Beatles invasion. This time it has nothing to do with music. How the State Forest Service is taking care of a big problem. Plus the nonprofit trying to keep our Colorado green and what they want to give you for your yard. Welcome back. Colorado forests are in trouble once again because of bark beetles. The Colorado State Forest Service found more than 5 million acres of state forest have been damaged by these insects. That they burrow into trees and kill them and foresters say climate change is keeping more beetles alive. That certainly makes our native beetles uh, a little more viable because it adds stress to the trees. And once those trees are stressed out, they're much more vulnerable to attacks by insects. This is some of the worst outbreaks we've had in Colorado in memory. And right now, the Forest Service is treating the hardest hit areas by thinning out or removing dead and infested trees and using pheromone patches to drive off those beetles. Right now, a Denver nonprofit is doing its part to keep our Colorado green. They are on a mission to plant trees in Denver neighborhoods. And I found out how Denver digs trees is sowing the seeds of change across the metro area. It's not easy being green in Denver. It's a difficult environment for most of the trees that we have in our urban area. But Jan Winkler is doing her part to make trees an integral part of her Denver neighborhood. Trees are trees, and they're, they're what we want and need in the communities. That There's a healing power to trees that I truly believe. Jan showed us seven trees she's planted in her yard. And this is a little Stanley plum tree that we planted in 2017. Thanks to the nonprofit group, the Park People. The 50-year-old organization is dedicated to enhancing Denver's parks and open spaces. 
Once a year, their Denver Digs Trees program offers free and low-cost trees to Denver residents with a goal of minimizing the concrete invasion in the Mile High City. The population skyrocketing, development going at a fever pitch. It's more important than ever to plant trees, reduce that heat, heat island, and uh, make sure to keep Denver a beautiful green city. Leah Schaefer says adding trees also improves property value, supports energy efficiency, and improves the air and water quality. Uh, the lighter colors are where the tree canopy is especially low. The park people has targeted 28 Denver neighborhoods, including Jan's Athmar Park area. They're great trees. If you went to a, a nursery, you'd pay quite a lot more. Through the Denver Digs Trees program, the park people have added more than 51,000 trees to the Denver metro area. And they say the goal is to combat the loss of trees due to Denver's massive construction boom. April 27th, Denver residents can pick up street or yard trees for free or for as low as $10, depending on the type. Residents have until February 15th to register. There's a limited number of trees and I should let other people have a chance. <laughs> and Jan says on pickup day, as a salute to her beloved trees, she'll be sporting her special earrings. They were a Christmas gift from my son who supports it. my passion. In Denver, Tom Mustin, Denver 7. And that was Tom Mustin reporting. We have more information on the tree program on our website, thedenverchannel.com. And if you have a story about our growing Colorado, let us know. Send us an email at rco at thedenverchannel.com. Good job, Tom Mustin. I like that, Tom Mustin. That's pretty good. <laughs> Up next, how safe is the food sitting in your fridge or pantry? We should be in a place where we don't have to worry about foodborne illnesses. The new report released by a Colorado group that could turn your stomach what they believe needs to change with your food. Plus, I had to swerve around him. Why wouldn't I get angry? I didn't do anything wrong. One woman is asking a judge for help and fighting a traffic ticket. Why her horn got her in trouble with the wrong driver. Welcome to the Denver 7 Sports Center. Busy day at the Pepsi Center. Double header for the first time in 13 years. First up, the Avalanche kicking things off with the Kings. And let's just say they're happy to be home. Plus, the Nuggets host the Cavaliers tonight. And we are hoping the winning continues at the Pepsi Center. A preview of the matchup later in sports. Right now, a special avalanche advisory is in place for our Colorado mountains, mostly down south, but you can see avalanche conditions are spread all over. This is a current map, and those orange areas should serve as a reminder to all skiers and snowboarders hitting the slopes this weekend, be extra careful. That is pretty scary, but the recent weather we've been having is also great news for ski resorts. A Basin sent us this video today. They say they've seen about 10 inches of snow the past 24 hours and check out today in Loveland. They've seen 14 inches of snow over the past 24 hours. That brings our snow total for the season to 204 inches. Wow. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson's over in the Weather Center and Stacy skiers loving this weather. Oh my goodness. I heard there was up to two feet up at Steamboat. So uh, boy, boarders and skiers absolutely loving this weather as we've quieted things down now. Temperatures in the upper 40s here for the Front Range and we had lots of sunshine today to help warm us up. Now it is much more quiet here across Colorado than it has been in the last 24 hours, but we do have a cold front coming this way. It's into California right now and it's headed this direction. So we have another chance for snow coming this way and it is going to affect your holiday weekend. As for temperatures at this point around the metro area, we have temperatures in the low 40s for the most part and our lows tonight will be in the 20s. But we'll talk more about that snow and when we're expecting it coming up in a few minutes. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Stacy. Nearly five weeks in and still no end in sight to the government shutdown. On tomorrow's Politics Unplugged, Nicole Brady sits down with former U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack. He talks about how the shutdown could impact the food stamp program. I mean, if this goes on long enough, could we see and food stamps going away and, and, and drawing up for people? Well, the department is currently drawing down on a reserve that was given and created after the last shutdown. Uh, and I, I expect that by the end of February, if this thing is still lingering in February, there's going to be a lot of uh, concern. Uh, I think they're going to continue to have the payments until uh, the end of February. So in that sense, it's not uh, immediate concern. But you know, the reality is you've got these federal workers, uh, they have to pay their mortgage, they got to pay their car payment. Uh, they, they have bills to pay. And the fact is, if they don't get a paycheck, it's going to be extremely difficult, create a lot of stress on a lot of people. And it's not necessary. Uh, we can essentially get this thing resolved. We can fix the immigration system. We can tighten our borders uh, and essentially have a safer and better uh, and more secure nation uh, without shutting the government down. And you can hear more of that conversation tomorrow at 4 on Politics Unplugged. 
right here on Denver 7. And developing tonight, a surprising announcement from the World Health Organization. They say those who oppose vaccinations are among the top 10 threats to global health. In fact, they're now on the same list as diseases like Ebola and HIV. Top reasons people don't get vaccinations are because they think they're unnecessary or can cause autism or other disorders. But experts like the CDC and the American Academy of Family Physicians say vaccines are safe and effective. And listen to this. The World Health Organization says vaccine hesitancy led to a 30% increase in measles cases worldwide just last year. A Contact 7 consumer alert for you tonight. Check your freezer. Purdue is recalling these Simply Smart Organic Chicken Nuggets. That's because they may be contaminated with pieces of wood. For more information on which packages are being recalled, head to our Denver 7 website. And this recall is just one of many. And now Colorado's Public Interest Research Group says more needs to be done for our safety. In a new report released this week, the group says overall food recalls have increased by 10% between 2013 and 2017. Bottom line, they say we need changes to our food safety system. We should also just have a basic way to trace a, an ingredient from farm to fork. We want to know. This group hopes limiting bacteria in water that's being sprayed on our crops could help curb these recalls. You can read more findings from that report on the DenverChannel.com. Okay, so we've all had this happen. A car comes out of nowhere, causing you to swerve to avoid hitting them. And the natural reaction may be to honk your horn and warn the other driver. But one Massachusetts woman is learning the hard way you may not want to lay off the horn for certain cars in particular. Here's Nicole Val on when you can use your horn and when you can't. Stephanie Kelly didn't know the horn on her Prius could cause so much added noise to her life. I didn't do anything wrong. It started here on this southern Massachusetts highway where Kelly says a cop in an unmarked SUV pulled in front of her. She says she swerved to avoid hitting him. And as I did, I blared my horn at him and, and I looked over and I saw that it was a police officer. The officer was reportedly pursuing another car, but wound up writing Kelly a ticket for excessive and unnecessary use of her horn. I had to swerve around him. Why wouldn't I get angry? And then to, to get pulled over and get a citation for that action is completely infuriating. Individual state laws vary, but according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, horns can be used to give an adequate and reliable warning signal. But using your horn out of anger, for example, if someone cuts you off, can result in a ticket. I did not flip this guy off. In Kelly's case, she was also accused of flipping the officer the bird, which she denies. As a state employee, she says she has the utmost respect for officers. The chief of police says the officer was within his rights to write the citation based on his discretion. It's just not fair. You know, it's my word against his, basically. The department says the officer has no prior complaints. But Kelly says paying the $55 ticket isn't the plan. She's taking this to a judge. I have to. I'm Nicole Vowell reporting. All right, there you go. Yes, we've all learned a lesson from that. <laughs> Don't honk at the police officers. <laughs> Coming up next, some mornings start with a cup of coffee. Or perhaps a bowl of cereal. But one dog's morning routine has been the exact same for the past 10 years. Plus, you know, what goes around comes around. Karma for the driver trying to knock over this snowman. What was hidden beneath that gave Frosty the last laugh? For a seven-year-old, I mean, you won't see that nowhere else. That is right. This little seven-year-old from Texas is taking the Internet by storm as a barbershop prodigy. Elijah Hernandez has taken part in barber competitions across the state following in her father's footsteps. I taught her the right maneuvers and her watching me over time. From there on on, I was like, hey, she's going to be the coldest barber I know. I call inspired little kids to come out and do the same thing. And she does need to be a few years older to get her license to cut hair. So for now, she spends her time practicing on friends and family <laughs> while dad keeps a close eye on oh, her. How cute is she? That's huh? adorable. Yes. All right, we all know how a morning routine can really get your day started on the right foot. Okay, so for a 13-year-old dog in Australia, his morning routine starts with a trip to the butcher. Fletcher first showed up there as a puppy. The butcher says the pup wouldn't leave, so they gave him a bone. Ten years later, Fletcher still comes by every day. We used to give him big bones, see how big a bones we could give him, and then Maddie came over and said she, he was getting too fat. <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher's favorite bone is lamb. 
if you're keeping notes at home. <laughs> these days, Fletcher's walks take a little longer due to his age and arthritis. He is 13. Because of that keen sense of smell, though, Fletcher is able to find his way every day. What a good boy. Huh? Cute. Yes. Well, talk about instant karma here. Right. One family in Kentucky used all the snow in their yard to build a giant snowman this week. But of course, one not very smart person thought it would be a good idea to veer off the road to try to knock the snowman down with his car. Instead of hitting Frosty, though, surprise, the car ran right into a massive tree stump that Olaf there was built around. The family <laughs> didn't see it happen, but the tire tracks in the snow tell the story. They commented online, life is hard, but it's much harder when you're stupid. <laughs> Stacey? No comments, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> See, do bad things, and bad things will happen. There exactly. You go. Lesson learned. Uh, lesson learned. Temperatures today in the upper 40s here for the Front Range as we're quickly staying on the warm side of things, but not for long. We have another chance for snow, and it will affect your holiday weekend. I'll have that coming up. Welcome back. Glad you're with us tonight. Well, all the snow we've been seeing lately is helping our resort stay open longer. Brackenridge has seen nearly 200 inches of snowfall since the season began. I just crunched the numbers. That's more than 16 feet <laughs> of the white stuff for all you sitting there at home. Because of that, they're extending the ski season through Memorial Day. It's the first time they've stayed open until May since the mid 90s. Winning. Wow. Math Winning. is hard. <laughs> <laughs> what a mathematical mind you have. That was amazing. Actually, just so did, fast. I just did it on my phone. But yeah. 16.6. Yeah. Wow. Okay, got That's it. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, we are having more snow headed this way, but it's going yes. to be headed toward the metro area. So uh, into our holiday weekend, it's going to be very interesting here as we have rain changing to snow, especially into Monday. But for tonight, temperatures will be in the 30s as we head toward 11 p.m., 31 degrees. And then tomorrow, it'll still be a mild day, just like it was this afternoon. Highs in the upper 40s here for the Front Range. A lot of sunshine for us. It'll be about 5 to 10 degrees warmer tomorrow. So this mild weather sticks around uh, through tomorrow. Tomorrow. Rain and snow, though, shows up on Monday as a quick moving cold front comes through the state. So that means more snow for the mountains as well. Then it's going to be pretty cold next week. Highs staying in the 30s for the most part throughout the week. So keep the jacket close at hand. You'll need it. Temperatures right now mostly in the 30s and 40s for our area. These are actually normal, at least close to normal, for our afternoon highs for this time of year. So we're not too far from where we should be. But the satellite radar picture looking very quiet. We don't have any watches or warnings here across the state, but they really do for the eastern United States. Look at this. This is the system that came from Colorado is now slamming into the east coast. We have rain 